Today, I'm going to continue my Cloud PBX checklist for large companies in regards to SMS and MMS. So just a quick summary. Again, I'm making this checklist, I'm making a video series of my checklist for large companies for Cloud PBX. So what this means is companies who call me, who have a large company and they say, hey, we're interested in purchasing a new phone system, I go through a list of discovery questions and I'm making a video series on those discovery questions. And based on those discovery questions, that's how I find the right service providers for your company. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the questions you need to be asking about SMS and MMS. But before I get too far into it, just a quick plug. If you'd like my recommendations on the best Cloud PBX vendors that your company should be quoting, you can watch this video, that's awesome, and more videos online, that's great. But if you want a shortcut, just reach out and contact me. Don't Google it. I'll get you some answers right away and it'll save you a lot of time. More information on that at the end of the video. All right, so SMS and MMS, texting. That's a feature that a lot of service providers are starting to offer, but not all of them offer for Cloud PBX. But it's a really cool one. And it's definitely something that you need to ask about internally to decide if this is something you need. And the question you need to ask internally is, are today, are any of you sending or receiving business related text messages to vendors or customers or things like that? Are you doing so today? And I think you'd be surprised that a lot of employees, especially in a large company, are doing this. And if they're doing that today, it's definitely a feature that you should consider having moving forward. And the, the reason why is because number one, it's going to consolidate the amount of phone numbers that your employees are having to use. For instance, if they're using their cell phone today to send and receive text messages, they've got that going on for, for communicating. And then they've got a phone number for their office that's you know getting voicemail, things like that. So they're having to check voicemail on a different platform than text messages and everything like that. So in essence, they have, they're giving customers two different phone numbers. Well, we all know what that happen, what happens when that takes place. So say if you give a vendor a phone number to send you a text message, what number do you think they're gonna call? Do you think they're gonna call your office number or the cell phone number that you just gave them? They're probably gonna call the cell phone number that you just gave them. So now you're getting business voicemails and text messages on your cell phone, and you're also getting business calls and voicemail on your business phone. So it just creates a mess. So getting all of that on your business phone number is nice because all of your phone calls, text messages, all that stuff is on one number. And you can kind of decide, hey, I'm taking calls or I'm taking messages now or I'm not. So you're not getting everything on your personal cell phone. So when you go home, you're getting text messages from customers or vendors on your personal cell phone mixed in with all the different stuff that's coming in from personal stuff. So it's nice, it, it, it really helps separate business from personal and it also gives you one number, which is a big convenience. And a lot of employees, if you really talk to them, maybe they would text, but they don't want to and they haven't been sending text messages because they just don't wanna give their personal cell phone number out to business associates, maybe customers or, or vendors. So it'll allow more people to text within your organization and it'll also allow the people who are text messaging to do it more efficiently. So that's text messaging, which is SMS. Now, take it a step further, you might wanna ask, are you ever sending or receiving pictures on the text messages? So that's MMS. And some companies allow SMS through your work DID, but they do not allow MMS. So you really wanna make sure that you know, do you need just SMS or do you need SMS and MMS? So I hope that helps a little bit. It's definitely a great question to ask because it'll help really narrow down the number of service providers that you should be quoting for your company for Cloud PBX. Again, 
If you want my recommendations, it's gonna be get you a lot better vendor a lot faster. So if you want to know which service providers your company should be quoting for Cloud PBX service, just reach out and contact me. The nice thing is, is that the service providers actually pay me my broker fee, so you don't have to pay me anything. So there's absolutely no excuse not to at least reach out. I've been in the industry for over 20 years, so I know all the major service providers who are in play for you, and I can quickly tell you which ones to avoid and which ones you should be quoting. I'll also introduce you to the right people within those organizations, and the fact that you don't have to pay me anything to do it, there's no excuse not to at least reach out and see what I have to say. So hope the video was good. If so, please don't forget to hit the like button down below and also subscribe to the channel. That would really help me out. It would be a nice favor and a nice thank you to me for making the videos. I'll see you on the next one.